QuickBooks Online 2023 Accounts Receivable Graphs. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. We're going to be using the free QuickBooks Online Test Drive, typing into our online search engine, QuickBooks Online Test Drive. We're going to be selecting the item that has Intuit.com and the URL Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks selecting the United States version of the software and verify that we're not a robot. Hey, we don't serve their kind here. What? Your droids, they'll have to wait outside. We don't want them here. They're much way up by the speed. We don't want any trouble. I heartily agree with you, sir. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Zooming in a bit by holding down control up on the scroll wheel. We're currently at the 125% on the zoom in. Selecting the cog drop down just to note that we're in the accountant view as opposed to the business view. We'll try to toggle back and forth between the two views so you can see where stuff is under both of them. Right click in the tab up top to duplicate it as we do every time. Right click in the duplicate a tab to duplicate it again. Back to the tab to the middle. Reports on the left. We're going to open up the balance sheet like we do every time. As that's thinking, we're going to go to the tab to the right to go to the reports to the left to open up the P to the L, the profit to the loss, the income statement, and then close up the hamburger, otherwise known as the ham boogie and range change from a 10122 to 123122 and run it to refresh it and then go to the tab in the middle close the boogie range into the change in from 010122 tab 123122 tab and run it to refresh it that's the setup process we do every time we note that these are our major two financial statement reports we've been looking at other reports most of which give further information more detail about one or multiple line items on these major two financial statement reports this time, we're going to be exporting some reports to make graphs out of those reports in Excel. And this is a, a technique that you want to be aware of, not just in QuickBooks, but any kind of database program, because you can always pretty much export to some kind of spreadsheet program and then use that program to make pie charts and whatnot, which can give you some added detail into your, your presentations and the information you might be giving if a bookkeeper to a client on a monthly, quarterly, yearly basis or to a supervisor if you're working in a company. So common types of pie charts might be something like you've got your current assets, you might break out, I'm sorry, you've got your assets in total, you might break out the current assets versus the accounts receivable and so on as a percentage in a pie chart of the total assets. You might do the same for liabilities, equity, uh, on this side of things. Uh, we are going to be breaking out the accounts receivable this time by who owes us money by customer, making a pie chart from that, possibly a bar chart. We can also do that with accounts payable for who we owe money to. On the income statement, it would be quite common to make say a pie chart of income by customer who we sold to, and then we could make it by item, what we sold, a pie chart, for example, we might make our expenses side, we might have our expenses broken out by vendor who we paid most in terms of the vendors to, or we can break them out, of course, by account. We could break the income out by account, although most companies don't have this many income accounts, so there's not a lot of detail, but we could break our expenses out by category in comparison to total expenses in a pie chart, and that could be a useful graph. So let's do it. Let's. I'm going to right click on the tab to the right and duplicate it. And then we're going to go into the reports on the left. We're going to close up the hand boogie. I'm going to hold control, scroll down a bit to the one, two, five percent and move on down to who owes you money. We're thinking about the accounts receivable now. So the easiest report to work with would be the customer balance detail. I mean, summary 
customer balance summary report. That's the one. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, and then we can range change. So we've got a custom. Let's just make it as of 1231.22. Run it. So there it is. So what we're going to do is this is a nice report that just gives us basically the customers and the balance and then the total down below, which is a perfect type of report to make like a pie chart out of because then I can take a percentage of everything compared to the total and make a pie chart or a bar chart or both, whatever we want to do, we can do it. We can do it. So what I'll do then is export this. Now this is a little bit more tricky because we have these, these sub accounts, which you might be able to close up right here. So maybe we collapse the sub accounts, which I might be able to collapse them thusly there that's even better that's even better that's going to take less leg work or uh, more finagle in once we get it so onto excel now we're just going to export this to excel it's beautiful that we're able to just hit the drop down and say export it to excel por favor this would only work if you have excel of course and then we can open it up and i'm going to try to take this report and put it into our other worksheet where we had the balance sheet and the income statement and so on imagining that we're then going to make this as part of our reports that we're going to give to our client at the end of the month quarter or year so here's that worksheet and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add my my new data worksheet here and then make a pie chart or whatever charts and then i can print all this stuff balance sheet income statement reports and the pie charts on this on this uh worksheet which is which could be great could give you a little bit more personalization to your reports we like personalized reports so here it is so what i'm going to do if you don't have this other worksheet that's okay you can just work in here i'm just going to copy the data and put it into the other worksheet and then work on it so i'm going to select the entire sheet by putting my cursor on the triangle or you can say Control a right click and copy it and then i'll move on over move it on over to this one i'm going to add another tab and put it in A1 or select the entire sheet, right click and paste it regularly. Double click on the data tab down below. I'm just gonna call it data, it's data for the AR because the final graph I'm gonna put into another tab which will just have the graph and not the data. And then I'll hide this one so that I don't print it when I actually print out all my stuff. So then it'll be all, all the stuff will be on a PDF and hopefully look nice and presentable and impressive so now we're gonna i'm gonna scroll in a bit let's i usually like going over here and back on over so i could see where the page breaks are scroll in holding down control scrolling up to 175 that's where i'm at and then notice we have a bit of a formatting issue because quickbooks exports Arial 8 and then the headers are different 14 and then anything that doesn't have is that calibri i like everything to be standardized when i start out so I'm going to put my cursor over here. I want everything just the standard Excel formatting. And then I go from there because that's what I know. Got to start with what you know. So I'm going to put my cursor over here, home tab, and hit the paint brushy. And then I'm just going to brush the entire thing with the triangle. So everything is just the normal. And then I'm going to format it the way I want to format it, which I'm going to right click and then format the cells. And I'm going to make them currency negative numbers bracketed no dollar sign we don't need the decimals either get out of here decimals and we'll say okay i like to make everything boldened just so you can see it better hopefully that makes it more visible because they're emboldened and that'll embolden you to follow along with the stuff with what i'm doing so then i'm just going to delete everything i don't need without any worry that i mess stuff up because uh, I can always go and I'm just going to delete this other tab over here. I don't need this anymore because I can always go back and double check my numbers uh, on on here. So if I mess anything up, I can check my totals in QuickBooks clearly. Okay, so then I'm going to do this fairly quick because this isn't an Excel course just to get an idea of it. I'm going to I'm going to put my cursor on the one and delete and go from one to five. I'm gonna, just going to delete all of these rows. I don't need them. I don't need them. I don't want them here. So I'm going to go down. Notice the total down here has this long formula instead of just a sum formula. So I don't want any formulas in my data. I just want it to, I just want it to be uh, hard coded numbers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the entire A with all the numbers or B that has all the numbers in it with the drop down. That's a column. 
right click and I'm just going to copy it. I'm going to paste it right over the top, but I'm going to paste it one, two, three, just the values. Don't give me any formulas. Delete the formulas. I don't want them here. I don't want no formulas. And then the total down here is worthless now because it's not a formula. I'm going to delete it. I'm going to delete from row 17 on down to wherever 24 that'll work. Right click, delete it. Get out of here. Get out of here. And so now we just got our raw data. So then I'll make this a little bit smaller between B and C. I'm just going to make that a bit smaller. And then what I, what I need now is to, is to sort this from largest to smallest. There's a couple ways you could do that. I could select the entire thing and I could go to my little filter thing up here in the data, add a filter and then sort largest to smallest. That's Z to A, but I don't like the filters as much because I feel like I get out of whack maybe with my data. So I like making a table out of it, even though that's a little bit excessive, but that's how I am a little excessive here. So I'm going to go here and insert a table. Now, as long as you're just in one cell and not multiple cells, it should pick up the entire table if there's nothing next to it or under it. So insert table, boom, it selects the entire thing. Great. And let's just say, uh, let's just say insert the table. Boom. It puts a little header line that gives you your drop downs. They have the drop downs. Now, now you can add the total. I can add the total back total and it adds that total column on down below. So there's our data. Now I can sort it with the drop down and just say, I'd like to see, uh, the Z to a por favor. Boom. Does it. Now we've got the the people that owe us the most money up top to the least money we can make our pie chart from this however uh if i make a pie chart from this data it's probably going to have too too skinny of slices and no one's going to be able to feel like they're full if that's the case so we're probably going to have to slim down the data also let's just calculate what we're doing here just so we could see it i'm going to make a skinny c column and anytime you have just a numbers up top that total up to something down below, you can always create like a bar chart, but we can create a pie chart from that as well. And what we're doing is we're just taking each number divided by the total, each number divided by the total. And then I'm going to make this whole column a percent. I'm just going to copy that down. And because it's in a, because it's in a table here, it should do the proper formula. So looks like it's doing what we would expect. And then the total down here, if I sum this up, should be 100%. That's what the pie chart's going to do. So I don't need, I don't, you would think maybe I'd need to take a, make the pie chart out of this data. You could, but we can just make the pie chart out of this data and, the, and QuickBooks will, of course, just do what it needs to do to make the percentages proper, fill in the key and whatever and all that stuff. So it's still got too many columns, but let's just pretend we're going to do this. I'm just going to take the meat right here in the middle. I'm not going to take the title row. I'm not going to take the total row. I'm just taking the people, the customers and the amounts that they owe us. And then we're going to go to insert. And then you could go to recommended here. And that gives you some rec some neat charts that are usually these are bar charts, but they give you a little bit more like that one's a bit different visual than maybe the one that you would select kind of randomly. But I want a pie chart. And so I'm going to say pie chart and boom. So you can see the slices are too small is the problem. It's like there's too much going on here. So to fix that, I'm going to say, I'm just going to do it like as we go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I only want like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And let's just put like everything else in total. So I'm just going to select these. How much does that add up to? It adds up to five one five three three so right here i'm just going to put one five three three and then delete on call on row 10 to row 17 not the total right click delete boom and then make this other other and so then i'll delete this for now i'll remake my pie chart and then this adds up to the five two eight one that still ties out to the five two eight one i just put everything that's below a certain area in other. So now let's insert the table again. So I'll pick these up, insert pie chart, boom. And that looks a little bit, a little bit nicer. Does it not a little bit nicer? Now I could put a title. I'm just going to delete the title. 
and then I could select different kind of formats that we might, might, might want to show here. So, and obviously once you pick one, you could, you could vary it more by adjusting the key and adjusting where you're going to be putting, you know, these items, for example, I just messed them up. So, I, you, you know, you could move them around. You could even move it like out here somewhere or whatever you want to do with it from that point. But the point is there's a whole lot more options. Once you have the pie chart here, you can adjust, you know, you got your standard color options and whatnot that you can use and and you've got all those options. So I won't go into all the options here, but there's that. And then you could also, of course, do a bar chart with this kind of thing. So I could select the whole thing and say, this time I want a bar chart insert. And this time I'll just, I'll let it pick. So it's picking like this one's kind of a neat one or this one's kind of a neat one. So this one's a little bit more unusual. So I'll say, hey, let's go with that one instead of my normal bar chart. And it gives it a little bit different look a little bit different feel a little bit different look a little bit different feel look and feel feeling look can i delete this there we go so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to put these two charts on their own sheet so i'm going to i'm going to hit the plus button down below double click i'm just going to call it ar graph and then I'm just going to take these two, that one, this one, copy and put that boom, a one, a one steak sauce. And then there we have it. Now I might want to see this on landscape. I can make it a little bit larger by going page layout, landscape, landscape. Okay. And escape the land undo what did i do so now i can bring it out to like that line and maybe i put this one on the next page there's not room for you up there you have to come down here and then we're going to make that larger so you might do something like that so now you've got your your pie charts over here and then if I was to print all this stuff out on one PDF, you might say, well, yeah, but then the data tab's gonna print and it's ugly. I don't want that to print. So you can right click on the data tab and then hide it. Don't delete it because then you'll delete the data. It'll mess everything up. You're just gonna hide it. And then if I go to the file tab and go to the print button, I can then actually, I go to the, I go to the entire worksheet. Sometimes this, this this selection gets messed up when i'm on the actual chart so if i go back on over and i go to anything else other than that chart tab and then do it again file print and then i'm going to say the entire worksheet boom and then i'm going to print it to the cute pdf printer which will actually make it into a a pdf as opposed to printing it and now i've got all the stuff here and there's my graph finally on the last page without the data. So it doesn't have the data tab. See, you see what I'm talking about? You just have the graph. So that's one way that you can kind of, you can format this into, into your, your bundle that you might be giving to clients and put it all on one sheet, which, and you can add some graphs to it fairly, fairly easily. And then just select the kind of graphs that you think would be appropriate takes a little bit more work to do that obviously because then you got to make you know a graph in excel but once you get good at that it's not too difficult to do and it's probably something that most people aren't doing so it could stand out a little to put in some extra time on that so so we'll do some more the sales graphs might be more common so we'll talk about those you know later but i'm going to select how do you get that thing back you might ask let's say you asked that I'm gonna put my cursor on this tab and then hold down shift and then this one, cause there's one in the middle there. Now there's one in the middle. These two are selected, right click and unhide, unhide. Oh wait, I hit hide. Well, let's do it again. I'm gonna select these two, right click and unhide. And then, and then I'm gonna say, okay. And then I'll just do it a couple more times. Right click, unhide, okay. And then right click and unhide. And there we have it. Okay, so there it's back now. 
So that's the process. I don't think I did anything different over here in terms of where things are located. We just went into the reports. So in the cog, business view, obviously everybody knows where the reports are at. They're in the business overview and then the reports under the business view. 